Hello guys, Frankie Day here. Okay guys, uh, for this evening, this is video four. This is the final reveal for my ICM 148 scale Beechcraft 18 or C45 Expediter. Since it's going to be a civilian version, which is modeled here for the final reveal, it's going to be the Beechcraft 18, the Beechcraft Twin 18. Okay, guys, uh, the kit itself is uh, is built right out of the box, no added stuff to it, just right out of the box. And I want to tell you something, guys. Um, there, there, there's some you're running into some problems with this kit. I should have addressed this earlier to you guys during the construction. Some parts fit, fit pretty well. The hard part, the problems I'm having with the model self in general, guys, which I'm pretty sure you guys probably had the same problem, is uh, joining the whole wing structure to the to the bottom of the fuselage. Well, the problem is, guys, you got these false wing spars, and also these firewalls and undercarriage structural tubing. It's all comprised is a sub a sub assembly, and with the sub assembly involved, it had all that cramming and details into it, so it can be viewed. You turn the model, take a look at it very good. You can see all this stuff in it, everything. But in general, what it does it rushes the wing. What causes the wing not to glue down and mate perfectly without stress or clamping stuff down. With all that energy inside that wing, it pushes up against the wing, and you got to really seize down on it like that to get it on there. Once that wing is fused together by clamping, which you shouldn't have to do in the first place, then you take the wing and go to the fuselage. When you do, you're going to have a gap on the wing roots, the trailing edge, and the leading edge of the wing as it's adjacent and joined to the fuselage. So what you got to do, fellas, is this, is that you got to take it back of a knife, and just very, very gently, not very much, just take off a little bit of the wing root, the top of the wing root, and that way the wing will, will close in more, and also, uh, also that'll do it. Now, all that can be avoided by doing one thing, too, is, which I didn't do, which I, I should have, I should have caught this when I assembled this kit. Like most kits don't do that. I mean I, I never had problems before. It really wasn't a problem guys. It was just a it was just a fit issue that had to be uh, tackled and conquered and uh, solved. And uh, so the thing about it is guys I didn't catch it in time. I should have taken a back of a took a file and filed down those wing roots. And that way those wing ribs, that way the wings would would fit together. What it is I think with all the with the with the false wing spars and the firewalls is pushing up against the top of the wing and it's caused the wing to flex out more, interfering with the fit. So that was the problem I've had. So that problem has been achieved overtaken with no problem. And uh, so in mind guys, and when you uh, like assemble this model, take a file board or back of a number eleven blade. To take off this, so just a, a little bit of the shaving on the top of the false ribs and also around the firewalls, so the wing will sit down real nicely. You shouldn't have to do that, that's an engineering flaw. But uh, hand up the hand, they built one, the kit one together like a dream, not that, not that hard. And uh, so the model here is all in uh, all in indent yellow with uh, red trim. And uh, that's about it, guys. Nothing fancy about it. It's a civilian twin engine Beechcraft 18. Uh, so the cab is friendly. We'll come over and swing around and take a look at it and uh, discuss the video and uh, return it back to yours truly and uh, tell you what I'll be shaking next. Okay, gang. Enough chat, enough talk. Let's go take a look at this little Beechcraft 18 here. Here it is, fellas, right here. It's all been painted yellow. I took some decal paper and painted it uh, red. 
and I made pinstripes out of it and I went ahead and uh, and um, added the, the pinstripe uh, tape on there, I mean the pinstripe uh, decal on there. Also made a, a chevron on the tail right here too. And also the license number I got out of my, my decal box. And uh, this is just a, it's a beautiful airplane guys. It's so twin engine 18s, they're a very beautiful airplane. And I can see why the military would uh, really would like to take their hand to have it something like this. It makes a very good transport and uh, utility aircraft and a trainer aircraft too. It, it's, uh, it's got some, it's got some uh, potential to it, what it was used for. And like most of them were using a civilian was actually uh, used more or less as experimental aircraft. They use them a lot for high altitudes and such. Uh, the Beechcraft 18 came out in uh, September of 90, 1940 and uh, it's, it's supposed to supersede uh, Lockheed's uh, 14 Electra. The same one that the uh, Earhart uh, crashed and burned in was never found in a sense. And uh, the 18 was um, actually was designed back in the it actually was designed back in the late 1930s. The 1930s were heydays for airplanes. They were really bringing us beautiful designs, such as the Lockheed Vega, uh, the Beechcraft, the uh, Monocoops. Uh, they they had all kinds of uh, the the the. the golden age of aviation. They were very, very, very popularized among pilots themselves. And uh, the, a lot of these aircraft right here is pictured here. This 18, sometimes some private uh, pilots would buy them for their own amusement. And some would use them as more or less as a civilian transport aircraft, like more like a shuttlecraft. They were used and uh, a lot of them were just used just for, for private uh, Ownership of having just just having a Beechcraft uh, 2018, and uh, so it's a high maintenance airplane to take care of, guys. You know, if you had one of these, it's I imagine after the Second World War, you probably could pick these things up the surplus, probably a lot less than a thousand dollars. But nowadays, you're running into a lot of money to get something like this. Well, like I say, guys, this is not a bad kit, but like I say, with the false spars, false spars. And the other carriage tubing, firewalls and everything. And what they did, they pushed up against the wing right there, guys. It caused the wing to get uh, bigger than it's supposed to be. And it interfered with the fit. So what I did, uh, you know, in the last video, I, I didn't discuss that. I should have. But I forgot to come to mind. And uh, what I've done, I've went ahead and just uh, shaved down those, uh, those um, spars. And reclose the wing up again and put it back on the fuselage and add a little filler and sand and give it another shot of primer and it came out pretty good. And uh, this is a nice airplane. This is the kit that makes it makes a dandy uh, display piece for military or civilian, as pictured here. There's so many beautiful markings for the Twin Beach. Uh, this is just a standard. Uh, if you bought this Beechcraft 18 for yourself, these were built by order only. And actually they ask you, would you like to have the standard model or would you like to have a custom color? It depends on much money you got. If you got more money than what you want to spend and you want to deck this thing up to, uh, to the way you like it, it's ordered as per uh, order on the aircraft. And it's, I've seen some yellow with brown trim and upper plating trim up to here brown trim with yellow pin, white pin striping and yellow and uh, beautiful looking colors and I've seen some all red with scallops on the wings and I see most of them I see a lot of them just natural aluminum with uh, the cowings painted either blue or red and a lot of them are just all white with a blue pin stripe but on the on the standard uh, Beechcraft 18 if you order this aircraft, you, you tell the executive officer who you're speaking to to place your order for this aircraft. You say, I'd like to have the standard, the standard uh, scheme. And the choice of colors would be either white, yellow, red, or blue. 
those are the traditional beach cup colors that were used at that era. Then after that, you wanted yellow, and they ask you what kind of trim you want. White trim, blue trim, maroon trim, orange trim, red trim. I like that red trim. This is what you get right here. And uh, they're a very beautiful airplane, you know. I mean, I always like the beach craft there. There's something down there, a pretty looking airplane, yeah. Just confusing as hell, you know. It looked like a Lockheed Hudson in a way. You look at it because uh, you get that stubby, uh, the stubby wings and also those twin tails on there. There was a couple of episodes with Sky King on there. They had the, they had the Beechcraft 18 on here. I think it was the air races they were doing. They they were uh, taking the Beechcraft up against a Bonanza and uh, and a couple other uh, sporty looking aircraft that were used throughout the 1930s. And uh, they had one just like that, just like this one here. It's all yellow with a red trim. So I figured that'd be a nice color to do, do this one. The paint's called Indent Yellow, and uh, it's almost like a trailer yellow, that of Airfix uh, brand, I mean the, uh, the Humbro brand. And uh, so, I, did, I just added a little yellow and added some little orange here to it, to tint it down a little bit to get it right, and that's about it. Seven coats of yellow on here, guys. Seven coats. That's all she takes. Okay, guys, we're going to take the camera and swing it around, and... Uh, Show you what's on the agenda next. I'm gonna put my pointer away and bring back the camera. Yours truly, guys. All righty, back here, guys. Okay, fellas. Um, right now I've been thinking this would be a lot more wise if I just go ahead and finish up what I got started already. So I got the C40. I got the uh, Beechcraft 18 all done, and I'll have a. a the final reveal for my Lindbergh 148 scale X Ringo ITC Life Like Pyro 148 scale Ferry Flycatcher. Uh, I'll have a, a fast video of that. Uh, speaking about the Flycatcher, I'll, I'll show it to you guys how much I got done on it. I just showed you a while ago I had this thing zoomed in, but it'll take a couple seconds, guys. Just a couple seconds, all it takes. There it is, little fellas. There's that little fart right there. Got all done. All it's ready. Just get the prop, get the get get the prop painted, and uh, go ahead and uh, doing the flying wires, and uh, she's uh she's done. Oh, okay, we'll zoom around and uh, go back to your truly again. Here I is again. Okay, guys, I'll be doing next now. I'm gonna put the beechcraft away while this was loading up. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start laying down the paint and finish up my Airfix 172nd scale Shackleton, the flying spark plug, or the shack. And that's right over here in the box here. I got it here. And right behind it over there, I need to fix is my PP2Y Coronado flying boat. Where the devil's it at? Wrong direction. There it is, guys. There's my PPTY fly, but I saw that sitting over there, so my God, Frank, you need to get that thing done. And uh, so right over here, I got my Airfix Shackleton over here, got the fuselage. It's all ready to be painted, guys. It's all ready to be painted. It's going to be a simple paint job. I'm going to do some weathering to it, keep it subtle as I can, and get this thing finished. It's been, it's been sitting there, ain't no sense. It's a waste of money to have something like this laying around to get broken and collect dust and break. And... Uh, and believe you me, guys, uh, we know how much these things cost, and they're not cheap. So, right now, I'm, I'm going to finish up on my plate, which I'm doing. I'm knocking them out right and left. And uh, I'll get back on the ward after a bit. So, the ward's got to wait a little bit, guys. I will not, I have not given up on her. And uh, so, right now, I'm going to finish up on my plate right here. It's not more wise, but I just go ahead and finish up this plate, because every time I start something, it turns into something that's going to be laying idle for a long time, which is called the ingredients of model syndrome. And sometimes I have avalanches in my stash pile. I get so many of them soon, boom. 
And you got a model like that right behind me laying on top of there, and it's only get busted when everything else goes down, so you double your pleasure for nothing. So I'm going to finish up my plate, and I got boxes made for these models, and put them back in the boxes, take them down below the basement. So I'll have some room because when springtime gets here after this long winter we're about ready to have. I'm going to go ahead and uh, do some spring cleaning inside this here uh, man cave back here. Get this place squared away and get me a better workspace back here. And uh, so I have more room to work on and make better videos. Well, fellas, that'll be it right there. So the next video will be tomorrow. It'll be the final reveal for the fairy flycatcher. And uh, probably, I'll say by Friday, I'll probably have a, vid a video on the, sh on the Airfix sh uh, Shackleton. So I'm going to start laying down the paint on tonight. And I'm going to start going ahead and uh, start painting it. And um, by this Friday, I should have uh, uh, pretty much of it knocked out. And the final reveal probably one day next week. Or maybe before that. It depends how much I do tonight on it and every day that it's done. So right now it's at the stage of uh, completion of putting their colors on her. Okay guys, uh, this is Frankie Day signing off. May God bless. Merry Christmas to you guys out there. And make Mama happy always. Please subscribe. And uh, build a lot of models. Post more stuff on YouTube, fellas. I miss you guys out there. And uh, so this is Frankie Day signing off. We'll see you later, boys. Take care, gentlemen.